It is not a parody or a play on words, it is history. Once, the Army's artillery forces were deployed to combat the emus. On November 2, 1932, two belligerent forces officially faced off, Australia and the emus. As with all wars, there were antecedents that led the two powers to an inevitable armed conflict. When Great Britain declared war on Germany in World War I, Australia immediately followed to send military support to their English comrades. They were of great help on several occasions and had some victories, but overall they did not fare too well. In 1918, after the Great War ended, the soldiers returned home. As a reward, the Australian government offered a large number of these war veterans land to settle on in a vast region of Western Australia, rural areas where they could farm, set up their farms, and live in peace with their families. However, luck was not on these veterans' side, nor would it ever be, as we will see. Soon came the crash of 1929 and with it the Great Depression. When this happened, one of the measures taken by the Australian government was to encourage the veterans turned farmers to expand their wheat crops, promising them that subsidies to maintain them would soon arrive. The farmers, therefore, expanded their plots to cultivate more wheat, but time passed, and the subsidies did not arrive, while the price of wheat kept falling and falling. These thousands of farmers were on the brink of ruin, and then something worse came along. To make matters worse, the emus. It happened that the emus regularly migrated to this area after the breeding season, and this season had been very good for them because, overnight, the Australians in this region found themselves invaded by more than 20,000 emus. The emus were delighted as they suddenly found vast cultivated fields to feed on and ravaged everything without hesitation or concern. The humans offered resistance but were quickly overwhelmed. The emus began to raid the area, ruining the crops. The farmers tried to stop them, but there were simply too many, and they were large, fast, and aggressive birds. The emus breached the defenses that the humans had erected against the rabbits, a plague in Australia, defenses that were not fortified enough to stop the advance of the emus. With this clever military tactic, the emus added the rabbits to their offensive, causing them to create uncontrollable chaos in the humans' lands while the emus ravaged their crops and took over the territory. The farmers realized they were incapable of facing them alone, even though there were experienced soldiers with firearms among them, but it was useless. They had requested government aid to solve the situation, but it fell on deaf ears because the Australian administrations had enough problems at that time to deal with such matters. They were underestimating the emus, a grave mistake, the situation was getting worse, and the farmers were defenseless. However, there were war veterans among them, so a commission of former soldiers was formed to speak directly with the Minister of Defense. Things were getting serious. The veterans had clear ideas. What they needed were machine guns like those they had used in the Great War. The Minister of Defense agreed and went further, immediately ordering the deployment of the Royal Australian Artillery. Moreover, they thought all this would boost the nation's morale, so they also sent a Fox News cameraman to cover the event, hoping it would be a swift battle. The command of the operation was given to Major Meredith of the 7th Heavy Battery of the Royal Australian Artillery. At first, Meredith thought that he and a couple of soldiers armed with Lewis machine guns and 10,000 rounds of ammunition would be enough to cut through no man's land and annihilate the enemy. However, the operation was delayed due to heavy rain which the emus took advantage of to disperse over a wider area, making them harder to track. When the rain ceased on November 2, 1932, the war officially began. The soldiers headed to the Campion region where they spotted the enemy, a small advance group of about 50 emus. The Major gathered two men from the platoon, Sergeant McMurray and Gunnar O'Halloran, to attack immediately, but they discovered that the emus had kept a sufficient distance to be out of the range of human weapons. So they changed their plan and tried to lure them into an ambush. The emus responded by dividing into small groups and running all over the battlefield, making it impossible to hit them, rendering the ambush useless. They continued this way throughout the day, prolonging the battle to the point of exhaustion. When the sun set, they had barely killed a dozen birds and had spent a tremendous amount of ammunition. The first human offensive was considered a military failure. Two days later, Major Meredith had set up another ambush near a local dam, and over 1,000 emu troops were spotted heading towards their position, something unusual given the birds previously demonstrated cunning caution. This time, the gunners waited until the enemy was very close before opening fire. However, the machine gun jammed shortly after the attack began, 
and with barely 12 casualties among the more than a thousand in this new advance group, the birds scattered, leaving the proud humans with another failed ambush. In the following days, Meredith realized he had underestimated the enemy, so he decided to move south where, according to reports, the emus were somewhat tamer. Better to start with the easy ones. When he arrived there, taking advantage of his position, Meredith became overconfident and mounted one of the machine guns on a truck to raid the area, sweeping through everything. A tactic that proved very ineffective because the truck couldn't match the speed of the emus, and the chase was so hard that not a single shot hit. By then, and since the first combat, the humans had barely killed 0.25% of the enemy forces and had already spent a quarter of all their ammunition. Meredith's official report noted that, fortunately, his men had not suffered any casualties in combat. Ornithologist Dominique Cerventi commented, and I quote, that it was evident the Emu command had ordered guerrilla tactics, and their motley army soon divided into countless small units that made the use of military equipment unprofitable. On November 8, the members of the Australian House of Representatives were forced to discuss the operation. The retreat was ordered. Major Meredith then declared, if we had a military division with the carrying capacity of these birds, it would face any army in the world. They can face machine guns with the invulnerability of tanks. Not even bullets can stop them. When the forces of the Royal Australian Artillery withdrew, the emus resumed their attack on the crops. The Minister of Defense argued in the Senate that the soldiers were necessary to combat the serious threat of the emus, and the Premier of Western Australia, James Mitchell, strongly supported a renewal of military efforts, which finally resumed on November 12. In this second attempt and with several lessons learned, Meredith returned with his troops to the battlefield and finally achieved relative success in their offensive. In the first few days, they managed to kill about 40 emus. More than 19,000 remained. The following battles during that month were much less successful. Finally, in December, after a month of fierce avian resistance, the humans managed to kill about 100 emus per week. It was evidently not enough. The resources spent were much greater than the poor results they obtained, and on December 10, the retreat was ordered again. In his report, Major Meredith noted 986 enemy casualties using 9,860 rounds, that is, 10 rounds for each confirmed enemy casualty. Additionally, Meredith claimed that 2,500 wounded enemies had died as a result of their injuries during the battle. And so, with the humans in retreat, the war ended. If you are wondering what happened next, the settlers continued to ask for help in the following years. In 1934, 1943, and 1948, but the government never again risked sending the army. Instead, a bounty system was established, and the locals and fortune seekers from different parts of the country ventured to hunt the emus over the next few years to collect the price on their heads. Officially, the war lasted from November 2, 1932, to December 10 of the same year. The belligerent forces were Australia, with the Royal Australian Artillery under the command of Major G.W. Meredith, against the emus, with 20,000 infantry troops among their ranks and under unknown command a war episode for posterity. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. Remember, the people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.